speaker today. Um, our guest speaker is uh, Christian Peter, and Christian is the oldest of four children raised in Middletown, New Jersey, down in Monmouth County, the, the epicenter, epicenter of the opiate epidemic. During his childhood, Christian was taught the value of hard work and integrity, which showed throughout his athletic career, even from its earliest of years. Christian was awarded a full athletic scholarship to the University of Nebraska, Cornhuskers, right? Uh, where he played on their football team. Christian's team won two out of three national championships. It was ranked the best college team of all time in 1995, while Christian was the team captain. In 1996, all of Christian's hard work and dedication paid off. He was signed to the New York Giants, played a defensive tackle for the New York Giants. Uh, and then he, he also played with the Indianapolis Colts and the Chicago Bears, where he retired in 2004. While playing football, Christian learned about teamwork, commitment, and what it means to be a successful leader. And, and now, Christian went on to pursue a career in the insurance business. He operates the competitive advantage companies as the president of the organization, which is in Red Bank, New Jersey. Christian currently lives with his wife and two, three children down in Monmouth County. Um, and and I, I've known Christian for a little while, and, um, and, and Christian, Christian is a, uh, a, a very giant, gentle, kind person that, that, that is really committed to helping people that are struggling with addiction. And, um, and, and I want to welcome you up to our stage, Christian. Congratulations to, to all the celebration celebrants. Um, this is awesome. I feel like I'm in a meeting. You know, there, <laughs> there aren't too many places that I feel comfortable. I used to. You know, one was in a locker room, and the other is in an AA meeting. And uh, you know, I feel really comfortable up here. So again, congratulations. Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, like I said. My name is Christian Peter, and I stand before you extremely honored and humbled to be included in this special day. A moment in time that means so much to each and every one here. This is an occasion to reflect, celebrate, and recognize the personal achievements among us. I am a former professional athlete and while I understand that sets me apart from many people here, rest assured, I share some common labels as well. I am a husband, a father, a son, a brother, a friend, and a businessman. I am also an alcoholic and drug addict. And while at times it can feel shameful, it is just as much a part of me as anything else. I often wonder how I became an addict. Why did this burden choose me? Or rather, how did it choose me? You see, for as long as, as I've been a substance abuser, I've known countless people who have walked down a similar road the only difference being, they seem to have exited unharmed. Did I miss warning signs? Probably. Should I have made one turn rather than another? It's possible. But that's neither here nor there. Addicts cannot look towards others. An addict can only look directly at him or herself. It's a hard truth one that I denied for years. But I've come to accept that this is my journey and I am the only reason. Having played only one year of football in high school, I was fortunate enough to earn a full scholarship to the University of Nebraska. 
For a kid of only 18 years, it was a whirlwind experience. The recruitment, the offer, the acceptance. I can remember arriving in Lincoln, Nebraska and feeling completely overwhelmed by the level of football. I questioned my ability. I was a boy and these were men. They were bigger, stronger, and faster than me. I pushed myself harder than ever before, knowing very well that if I wanted to compete, I would have to work twice as hard as the others. But in becoming a stronger athlete, I also became a bigger partier. My alcohol tolerance was at an all-time high, and because I produced so well on the field, my behavior off the field came with little consequence. These were the so-called glory days. The team seemed unstoppable, playing in three consecutive national championship games. And by my senior year, I was captain of the best college football team, not only in the nation, but of all time. I was foolish in not recognizing that my drinking had a dangerous pattern but the distraction was too great. My teammates and I received unlimited attention, praise, and respect. The elation that I felt drinking was also what I felt playing football in Lincoln, Nebraska. In 1996, I was drafted by the New England Patriots. Two days later, I was released due to negative press that had surfaced from my college career. I was 21 years old and I thought my career was over, but my continuous uncertainty was relieved after I received a phone call from the New York Giants. They offered me a career, but more importantly, they offered me a second chance at life. Their offer, however, came with some conditions. I had to attend rehab in Sterling, New Jersey called Honesty House. I had to get a sponsor. I had to attend daily AA meetings and counseling three times a week. I was automatically thrown into the NFL substance abuse program where I was randomly tested for alcohol and drugs. The circumstances were a lot, but playing for the Giants was a dream come true. After four seasons with them, I was fortunate enough to continue playing with the Indianapolis Colts and Chicago Bears. Despite my demons, I had a long career playing football. <laughs> it all ended when I retired in 2004. I closed one chapter, but opened another. One from the past. I had no routine, no structure, no program and I stopped going to AA meetings. I started drinking again, but this time it was different than before. In addition to alcohol, I found cocaine and opiates. This cocktail of destruction ran me into the ground for three years. I realized that the bottom had no more room for me. I had to go back to the only place I would knew that I knew would help get me healthy. AA. Today my life is good. It's not perfect, but it's good. I struggle with the day to day, just like everyone else. I become annoyed, overwhelmed, sad, angry, but now I know how to confront such feelings. See, I've acquired skills and tools throughout my sobriety. The same skills that you are leaving here with today. Coming to Integrity House, either by will or force, created change in your lives. You received addiction treatment, help in workforce placement, and supportive housing. Knowingly or not, you are reducing the percentage of addicts who become involved in crime have chronic health issues, and most importantly, you are reducing the number of addicts who die. But I must remind you, there is truly no graduating.
from dependency. We are victims of a disease. Every day will be a battle for you and every passing night will be counted as a success. Should you become frustrated, doubtful, compelled by past behaviors, it's important to remember that you are different than other addicts. You are better equipped. You are graduates of the Integrity House, an institution that since 1968 has created opportunities for people to take back their lives. Integrity House has a mission. You are the undertaking. Your sobriety is the journey and your success adds to the betterment of not only New Jersey, but the nation. It's important to be reminded that addiction, specifically heroin and opiate, is an epidemic. It's a heaviness, and it's so much bigger than all of us who have overcome its persuasion. For our continued sobriety, it's significant to lend a hand in this fight. Become a mentor, live a life of service. It's the very reason I started my friendship with Ricky Tigger Stavola. Six years ago, I ran into my friend Tigger. At that point in our lives, I had been sober for about five years. Tigger, who was struggling with an ongoing heroin addiction, had reached rock bottom. When an addict reaches rock bottom, and as I know from experience, you do the unthinkable. You do the one thing you said you were never gonna do. The thing that you thought was beneath you. You reach out for help. That day, Tigger asked me to be his sponsor. And from that moment forward, we began walking through the 12 steps of sobriety together. For two years, I had the privilege of going to meetings with Tigger, seeing him progress into a healthier, more mindful, and righteous man. He took sobriety very seriously, never once questioning the program or the efforts I made to help him. Tigger wanted nothing more than to be clean. He wanted a sober life, a way of living that allowed temptations to be lifted and good to be generated. But as we know, the disease of addiction can infect the very core of a person, leaving them empty, a shell of what they once were. In Tigger's case, the disease became bigger and stronger. He did put up a fight. He had grit, tenacity, but ultimately, it was more than he can handle. Like all addicts, he was haunted by evils and enticed by what appeared to be an easy way out. The desire for another hit. Just one more high. In 2013, Tigger lost his battle and overdosed on heroin. Someone who seemed to have his whole life ahead of him is gone. Tigger wasn't a bad kid. In fact, and it's important to remember that addicts are not bad people trying to get good. We are sick people trying to get well. Before Tigger passed, he wanted to make clear that the courage he gathered to get through rehab, to try and fight his disease, came from his family. After Tigger's death, his parents, Rick and Lisa Stavola, and brother Alex, founded the Tigger House Foundation. The Tigger House helped struggling helps those struggling with heroin and opiate addiction. Through our amazing partnership with Monmouth Medical Center and the Robert Wood Johnson St. Barnabas Hospital Group, we have been able to help addicts 
and their families get the support they need and desire. I know there are families amongst us here today, and I constantly ask myself, where would we be without the support, worry, care, and guidance from our loved ones? I always tell people that family members are more invested in addiction than the addicts themselves. They are plagued by the idea their son, daughter, brother, sister, husband, wife, is never coming home again. They are struck down by pain, worry, and heartache. You may be sober, but they will never, they will forever be overwhelmed with fear, and that's never going away. So for them, for the people surrounding you here today with love and faith, I ask you to hold on tight, fight until you win, lead by example and triumph in the name of your families. I want to thank Bob Budzik and his team at Integrity House for giving me this wonderful platform and opportunity. Your goodwill sees no limitations, and I am endlessly inspired by your role in the community. If there is one last piece of information I hope you can take with you, it is the knowledge that there is both hope and help. You are not in this alone, and we will overcome. Thank you for your time. Congratulations to the celebrants on a fresh start, and may God bless all of you.